What's up YouTube, it's James Q Quick from Learn, Build, Teach, and today I wanna to tell you about the top Visual Studio Code extensions for JavaScript. Before we get started, I wanna give a quick shout out to my website, learnbuildteach.com. You can actually come here and subscribe to my newsletter to get updates about the latest content, free or paid, as it comes out. So you guys should definitely check that out and sign up. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with the first one here, which is JavaScript ES6 code snippets. Now, if you're relatively new to JavaScript, uh, ES6 is a, kind of a version of JavaScript. Uh, came out a couple of years ago with lots of different changes. And most of the popular frameworks out there leverage modern quote unquote ES6 JavaScript. So the things in ES6 are things that you're gonna wanna learn if you don't know them already. They're things that you're gonna wanna practice and after you get kind of comfortable practicing and learning them, there's no real reason to type out different snippets over and over again, which is where the, uh, where the code snippets uh, extension comes in play here. So there's lots of different extensions in here. It can, uh, you can use these extensions in lots of different files, JavaScript, TypeScript, React, uh, TypeScript, React as well, HTML, Vue. So your modern front end frameworks uh, can support these extensions as well as uh, Angular uses TypeScript. So CS files covers that as well. So a couple of the big ones here that I think are the most useful, I'll just kind of walk through really quick so you guys can see. So uh, this is just a sample quiz application that I've got. It's actually a mini course that you guys can check out called design and build a chat application with Socket.io. So I'm gonna come in here just to show you a couple of these snippets. So the first one is an IMP. We'll do uh, import if I scroll down just a bit. Uh, so this will let me import something from something. So in Node here, I'm using the require syntax because that's what Node uses. But if you get into uh, like React or Angular or something like that, you'll be doing uh, your, your imports this way. So this is just a snippet to uh, import from a module. So if I wanted to import something from Gatsby, for example, I could do that. Uh, a little bit different version of this is IMD, which is import the, def or excuse me, a named export from something. So if you're importing something from Gatsby and uh, then once you figure out what you're importing from Gatsby, so uh, I don't know, something link is something you can import from Gatsby. So this is for basically named export. So regular export here uh, or a default export here and then a named export here. All right, so that's a couple of them. We'll do a couple more. So FRE is a for each for an array. So array dot for each, and then you get your current item. Uh, I hate writing that out, so it's easy to just uh, use the snippet here. And then an asynchronous function, ANFN, will give me an async function here. This is really useful, um, you know, in a lot of different scenarios, especially for like callbacks here. You can see that kind of follows this syntax. So I could go out and fill out my params and then come in and type in the code in this function as well. So anonymous functions are things that you're gonna see all over the all over the place. And then the last one is then C to add a dot then and a dot catch. So if you make some call to some to a make some call that returns a promise, you can uh, use this snippet to surround or to tack on a dot then and a dot catch to handle the data that you get back or the error that it returns. Pretty cool. All right, so that is the ES6 code snippets. Next, we're gonna do the debugger for Chrome. Now, if, you, if you've been doing web development for a while, uh, this may or may not be something new for you. If you're new or just kind of inexperienced in the debugging world, you may or may not know that Chrome has debugging tools built in. With this plugin, you can use the, that debugging functionality inside of Visual Studio Code and never have to leave your editor. So for example, I've got, let me come back to my code here. I've got in my terminal, I've got uh, my chat application running. I've got a breakpoint set at uh, anytime a user connects and then I can run debugging here. And this is thanks to the extension. I'll go and uh, load the page here. Let me refresh. And this is going to take me over to Visual Studio Code. It's gonna hit this breakpoint. You can watch for variables. You can look at local variables. You can view your call stack and you can iterate through the code as you go. So everything that you would expect debugging wise, you can do right here inside of VS Code. All right, so next up is ESLint. Now, if you're new to ESLint, Lint, it can do multiple things for you. Uh, the uh, most obvious one is it can auto fix your code and you can check out the docs here if you want at eslint.org, but it can uh, kind of auto format your code. So if you, if you decide on a configuration 
and configure it to activate on save, you can uh, have it auto format your code. ESLint will also, and I, I do air quotes here, yell at you if you don't follow code standards that you uh, that you set up with your configuration. So things like you need a trailing semicolon or double quotes versus single quotes. Not only can it fix those things, but it can also yell at you. And I say yell at you. It'll give you a notification, basically a little syntax thing inside of Visual Studio Code to let you know, hey, this doesn't quite match up with what your configuration says you should be doing. So this is a great way to keep your code consistent uh, across teams, across people, all that kind of stuff to make sure that everything looks the same no matter who's writing the code. All right, so import cost is up next, and this is uh, especially useful for those people who are really conscious about how big your bundle size is that you put out. So when you import different packages, uh, you really wanna be aware of, of how big those packages are sometimes, or those modules, whatever you wanna call them, to make sure that it's not really bloating your, your, your bundle size unnecessarily. So this extension import cost will give you a little uh, tag, little annotation thing over here to show you how big exactly the package that you're bringing in is. So in the example that they have, they're, uh, they're bringing in a, uh, a named export uh, unique ID from, I think it's Lodash. And you can see originally it's uh, 70 kilobytes and they're like, hmm, this is not so great. And then they kind of change it up to do a default import uh, from slash unique ID. And uh, it lowers the, the import from, uh, what was 70, I think it was, to, 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 to two kilobytes. So again, this is great if you're really, really conscious about how, how big your bundle size is, how, how much uh, space those packages are that you bring in. Import cost will show you right there in line how big it is. And then you can kind of play around with maybe there's a different way to import just the thing that you need instead of an entire package or library, something like that. All right, so next up we have uh, Path IntelliSense, and this one is pretty handy because inside of your JavaScript, anytime you start typing a path, basically if I do a slash, it's gonna show me uh, some IntelliSense for what my uh, directories and files are. So if I wanted to import something from the public directory, if I wanted to import the app.js here, I could uh, doing imports in React, for example, if you're importing components or if you're an Angular and you're importing components as well, or Vue, I, I imagine the same thing you're often pulling in files uh, from your file system and you may or may not be super comfortable to be able to just fully type that out. So this just gives you IntelliSense for directories and then file names to, to go ahead and import those things quicker than you would have. All right, and then we have uh, better comments here. So these I think are pretty cool. Uh, obviously, you know, during school and best practices, always comment your code. But then there's a little bit more to commenting than just you kind of explaining what a function does, for example. So there's, there's ways to basically notify yourself with a to-do to say, hey, there's something I need to do later on. There's ways to leave kind of a question, say, I don't really know how this works. Maybe the next time someone comes into the code base, they can see that comment and then give you an explanation. Uh, maybe there's something really important that you need people to see, like a deprecated function and tell them not to use this anymore. So, so those different scenarios, this, this extension, Better Comments, gives you kind of color-coded annotations for those. So let's come back to this uh, file here. And the one I use most, the one I use most often is to do. So after I type in to do, it turns this orange color and I can go through my code base and I can just do a, a, a search for to do and go through and, and take care of all these to do's. Uh, so a couple of other ones uh, important, this will turn it red. So here's something, do not use this or you will fail, I don't know. So whatever you wanna do there. And then uh, another one you could do is a question mark. So it's kind of hard to tell here this blue is slightly different than this blue. It just kind of, kind of so happens that uh, with my color scheme, with my theme, those blues are not that different because my comments are basically already this color anyway. But this is a great way to add some, some color context to your comments. And then last up here is NPM IntelliSense. And I probably could have uh, put Path IntelliSense and NPM IntelliSense right next to each other because they do pretty similar things. So I'm just gonna, it'll be just as easy to explain here. So if I wanted to require express here and I come in and for some reason, you, maybe I don't know how to spell express. That's not a great example because it's not complicated. But if I had a package that maybe I knew it started with an E, but I didn't know exactly uh, the name or the full name or whatever it is, this is gonna give you IntelliSense in here to go and choose that package that, uh, that is installed locally. So this is looking through your node modules folder. It's either looking through your node modules folder or your package.json. 
And then it's uh, basically providing you IntelliSense based on the packages that you've got in your application. So again, not, not overly complicated, but does kind of speed up your workflow. It, these are things that you don't want to care about. You don't want to care about looking up file paths. You don't want to care about typing out a complete uh, require statement or a complete uh, file statement. So these IntelliSense extensions really help with speeding that kind of stuff up. All right, so that's going to wrap up my top extensions for JavaScript in Visual Studio Code. I'm curious, what extensions are you guys using for JavaScript? Are there any that I missed? Are there any in here that you disagree with? And do you enjoy the ones that are here that I've listed? So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Get to Visual Studio Code, take advantage of it, and I'll see you in the future videos. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out learnbuildteach.com to sign up for the newsletter to learn about my latest content. Thanks for watching.